Hello, my name is Ludi Simpson. I have the pleasure of talking you through the process of constructing population projections for local areas. That's areas that don't have as much official demographic attention as do council areas. The aim is to give you an overview of the work involved, the decisions that you might make and the resources you will need. So let's start with the strategy. It has three parts to it. In stage one, we learn about the demographic characteristics of each local area in the recent past by preparing a training projection in POP group that covers the past years. In stage two, we put that new knowledge as assumptions in POP group's input files. And in stage three, we use them in a projection that continues into the future, the distinguishing features that we have measured for each local area. In stage one, the data used will be the annual mid-year population estimates for each local area, which are available from the year 2001, and the births and deaths for each 12-month period between the mid-year population estimates. At the time of making this video, population births and deaths are available up to 2018 throughout Britain. But when you are watching, perhaps there will be data up to 2019 or 2020 or later, if this video stands the test of time. These data are entered into Excel files, as described in detail in the guide. In the training projection, PopWork calculates for us characteristics of each area that we did not know before, for each year in the past. It does this by comparing births to the number of women at each age to compute each local area's fertility rate. It also compares the deaths with the population and its age composition to compute each local mortality rate. And most importantly, it computes the impact of migration at each age. For example, If the number of women aged 21 in 2018 is more than the number aged 20 the year before in 2017, then there must have been, in net terms, an inward migration during the year. Popwick calculates flows of in-migration and out-migration, which are consistent at each age with this evidence of net population change. It does this for men and women separately. In stage two, this local knowledge that has been learned is entered into new exile files as assumptions for future years. This is not automatic, but there are examples and utilities that make the user's work straightforward. Stage three is the production of projections. These are called continuity projections because they continue what you've learned about the past experience of each area into the future. PopWork makes the projection and produces results in Excel, provides an interface of charts and tables to examine them and allows you to copy results to your own report. The continuity projection is often all that local services and plans require of you, the projectionist, but it is straightforward to make variations to the assumptions if, for example, you feel the future is unlikely to be the same as the recent past. Let me show you what this local knowledge means in a practical example. Here are some of the electoral wards of East Lothian. The past looks a bit of a jumble because the experience in any year is never the same as the one adjacent to it. But clearly, some wards generally have lower fertility than others. The projection in this case, as you see on the right hand side of the chart, has taken the latest five years of evidence averaged to characterise the areas and set the assumptions for the future. A similar um, picture is seen for mortality. It has generally been decreasing since the turn of the century, though more slowly recently and is assumed to continue to decrease here in the future because that is what is expected nationally. But the assumptions for the future use the knowledge gained from the training projection that, for example, Tranent has higher mortality than other wards 
a North Berwick lower mortality. And then migration. The training projection shows that some wards tend to have more in migration in net terms than others. Some years seem atypical with particularly high in migration or out migration. The assumption for the future can take a set of recent years that seem typical or likely to be continued. And here it is Dunbar that has higher in migration than the wards for example, of Preston and Musselburgh that have hardly any impact of net migration on the total population. There may be different patterns for younger and older people, and Pop Group captures the differences for each area from its population change in the past two decades. Now, let's move to some of the options that you may make when planning the projections. I've already mentioned that some recent years may not be typical and you may wish to ignore them when setting assumptions about future demographic change. Here are some other choices that you can make. Prisoners, students and armed forces can be treated as part of the general population or as special populations. Special populations are those that maintain a predictable size and age structure and can therefore be projected separately. If this is the case, then birth, death and migration are assumed to occur within the remaining general population. The choice about using special populations depends on there being reliable data locally. Some councils may have developed sources for these populations that you can use. Secondly, the pop group guide suggests that you use the longest possible past data series to learn about your local areas from 2001. This also puts the projections within a useful long context of the past change. But there may be reason to start at a later year, for instance 2011, and the procedures for making the projection are exactly the same. However, all data are collected from 2001, so ease of data entry is not usually a sufficient reason on its own for not starting from 2001, which is the recommendation. Thirdly, in this list, will you constrain the results for sub-council areas to some to a projection for the council area, perhaps the official projection, which you may have confidence in? The advantage is, is, the advantage is that error in the projections for smaller areas will be reduced if the projection for a larger area is more reliable. However, there is a danger that only one or two of the small area projections are badly in error and the constraining process which reduces or increases all the small areas to make sure that their sum is consistent with the larger council area will spread the largest error to all localities. Okay. Uh, to be made. And usually the choice is to constrained to a council area of projection that is generally accepted. Finally, a word about resources that you will need. You'll need a license for the pop group software, of course, which runs only on Windows and with Microsoft Excel 2007 or later. You will benefit from experience with pop group, which most users get from replicating the government's official projections for a council area as a whole. Pop group is a versatile software that performs many complex functions, made straightforward to use by non-experts. But it will require your careful preparation of files and study of its results. In practice, the first set of areas within when the procedures are being followed with a written guide is likely to take the equivalent of a full day. After that initial learning, subsequent sets of areas can be forecast much more quickly in under two hours. There's a similar outlay of time for projections of households for the same set of small areas. Once a projection has been prepared, however, it can be amended very easily so that variants with changed assumptions take a matter of a few minutes to both prepare and run. It's always worth building in some time to consider the most effective way of communicating results to your main users of demographic information. 
make sure that the potential interest in these quantified pictures of the future population is fully satisfied among colleagues, councillors, service planners, local businesses, the press, other organisations and indeed individual members of the public. Well, I hope this video has given you a fair sense of what's involved in making population projections for small areas and wish you well in making your own. The written guide gives step-by-step -step instructions and all comments on the guide and this video are very welcome. Thank you.